Today on the Crooked Pigs Barbecue channel, we're talking everything competition chicken. I'm gonna give you all kinds of tips, tricks, pointers. We're gonna talk cuts and strategies and turn-ins. And at the end of the video, I'm going to give you my complete tell-all competition recipe. Stay tuned, you can watch me cook my competition chicken. Before we start with today's video, we'd appreciate it if you'd like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Also, if you wanna see more of the great competition barbecue content that we're going to bring, Go ahead and ring that notification bell so that you can be notified each time we drop a new video. Thanks again. All right, before we get into the details of our competition chicken recipe and the hows and whens and how to's of how to cook our competition chicken, I wanna talk a little bit about barbecue competitions and a little bit about cooking competition chicken. So this past season was a successful season for us in the chicken category. I think there were only two comps that we didn't uh, walk or get a call in the chicken category and we had a few first place finishes and some top threes and top fives for sure. It was a good season for us. We cooked chicken legs and we'd recently moved to the chicken legs from the chicken thigh. Now I know it's pretty standard and most teams do cook chicken thighs in KCBS comps but we moved chicken legs because we felt like it was easier. The prep was easier, the cook was easier, and we felt like the bite was a little bit better. Now, there's trade-offs in everything in competition barbecue. Competition barbecue is, is definitely a game of trade-offs. Everything you do will have some sort of trade-off, some sort of positive, some sort of negative. And it's a battle of balancing all of those things. But we feel like that if you're not constantly evolving in the competition barbecue game and constantly improving, then you're getting worse. There's no standing still in this game. If you look at some of the older competition barbecue television shows or box turn-ins that people post on social media from three, five, ten years ago, you will notice that this game has stepped up significantly and it does every day. There's constantly new teams who are evolving, pushing the envelope, striving to improve, try new techniques, try new presentations, try new cuts of meat. And we think that you've got to constantly be on your game and constantly be developing as a barbecue cook and as a barbecue team. And so even though we had a successful uh, season with legs, we think that it's time to make another change. Um, we've noticed that wings are coming on a little bit in the, in the barbecue competition scene. And we think that wings are a good choice for a number of reasons. So ultimately, I think a barbecue competition comes down to energy conservation and discipline and focus until the end of the game, until all your boxes are turned in. I think that's what makes the difference between successful teams and middle of the road teams. I think that if you can finish, if you can do what you set out to do and persevere till the end and keep your focus and keep your discipline, not cut any corners and get to the turn ins, you'll be way more successful than you would be if you slack off towards the end, run out of steam, run out of gas, and start to cut corners. Now, this is a difficult task. A barbecue competition is two days over multiple hours. Your focus is divided between four categories. You've got turn-in times to remember, meet timelines to remember. It's a difficult, difficult task, and so, I find that uh, it's really easy to let yourself go by the end and start to cut a corner, skip a step, these sorts of things. And so what needs to happen in order to be successful is you need to conserve energy. You've only got so many matches you can light. You've only got so much bandwidth. And that goes for you and all the other members on your team. And this, this also goes for uh, home barbecue cooks. If you're trying to put out a spread for uh, a party that's coming over, or you're trying to cater a wedding or, or something of that nature, uh, it's, your attention's going to be divided. You're going to have many different things to focus on. And at some point, something has to give. And so what we've kind of concluded, uh, myself and the rest of the Crooked Pigs team, is that wherever you can conserve some energy, it's important. And so we find ourselves doing things like preparing as many things as we can before we go. Prepping all the meat, trimming all the meat preparing all the injections, preparing all of the sauces, getting things set up as best we can in our competition trailer in order that we will have less to do when we get there. Also, the competition trailer is another thing that, that, is, uh, that, that helps you to maintain your focus and your bandwidth 
for the end of the competition. Competition trailers make things easier. Lots of people used to cook in tents, plenty still do. But we find that if you have some running water and you know where things are located and you didn't have to set everything up when you got there, but you did all of that prep work setting up before you left, well then you're more successful at the competition. Things are more repeatable and you have more bandwidth, more matches left, more arrows in your quiver by the end of the barbecue competition. And so anything a person can do, anything a team can do in order that they can conserve some energy and save that for the final push, the, the morning of the barbecue competition, save it for the turn-ins, save it for the turn-in boxes, save it for the presentation. Anything you can do to save that energy is beneficial. And so bringing this back full circle to chicken, we found that, yeah, our thighs were successful and they looked really good in the box. In fact, many times I look at some of our competition boxes, I wish that we continued to turn in chicken thighs because those chicken thighs looked really pretty in that box. They're symmetrical, they're easy to put in that box, they look great. But here's the problem with chicken thighs. They require way too much prep work. They also are hard to cook. The skin split frequently, and so you have to cook way more than you need for the barbecue competition in order that you have six nice pieces that you can turn in. Also, uh, the bite on a chicken thigh is sometimes problematic. The skin needs to oftentimes be peeled off and scraped and placed back on, and then sometimes that skin has a tendency to pull off. And the thigh is a large piece of meat, and so in order to get your mouth all around that, it, your, your teeth haven't clenched down on the meat at the point that you pull away from the bone. And so what ends up happening is the judge or anyone eating the, the piece of chicken thigh is more prone to pull that skin off of the chicken thigh than they might be another piece of meat. So we transitioned as a team from chicken thighs to chicken legs. And the reason we made that transition is part of what I've explained here, but chicken legs didn't need the same amount of trim. So as a team, we decided to move to chicken legs. For many of the reasons I explained about the problems with thighs, we think some of those are uh, remediated with the chicken legs. Uh, first of all, they don't require as much prep. You don't have to pull the skins off and scrape them in order to get a bite through piece of chicken. Also, they can be cooked a little longer. I think they're a little more forgiving in order to get that bite through skin uh, versus the chicken thigh. Uh, but mostly that prep work, I think, was important. Uh, the other predominant reason we moved to a chicken leg was because we feel like the bite's easier for a judge. They can get their mouth farther around the piece of meat and bite through. They're less prone to pull that chicken skin off. And the chicken skin on the leg encircles the whole piece of meat. It's not just laid across the top. So even if it is apt to pull a little uh, or slide a little, it's not going to pull completely off that piece of meat. So that's why we moved to a chicken leg. And I think that we were successful in doing so. And I think that many barbecue teams uh, have begun to migrate towards legs for many of those reasons that I suggested. And I think that legs are a fine choice. And there may be comps this year that we do cook chicken legs. But at this point in time, we've made the decision as a team, I think, to transition to chicken wings. For, again, many of the same reasons that we transitioned to chicken legs. I think that the wing solves many of the problems that the leg solved of the thigh, but in a better way. Again, the skin wraps entirely around the chicken wing, just like it does on the leg, but now you've got a really thin piece of meat, and the judge is going to have their teeth almost closed when they bite into that chicken wing, and uh, you're really it's really difficult to end up with a chicken wing skin that pulls off the chicken wing. It's virtually impossible. And so you never have to run that risk that the skin is going to pull off your piece of meat. The only concern you have is whether it's bite through. Also, I find that it's virtually impossible to split a chicken wing skin. You don't have to scrape it. You can cook it till it's tender in a butter bath or however you cook your chicken. And I find that maybe one in a hundred might split versus maybe 30 30 percent of my chicken uh, thighs and maybe a quarter of my chicken legs the skin would split by the time I had it to the done as I was looking for and so the the wing I think is going to work better for that reason also I find that 
a wing can make a pretty nice presentation. There's only so many ways you can turn in chicken thighs and chicken legs, but the wing gives you versatility. You can shingle the wings in there. You can do a circle of wings. You can do any number of uh, diagonal, uh, overlapping sorts of patterns with those chicken wings. It gives you a lot of versatility for that turn-in box and some originality. And uh, I think that at least the times we have done chicken wings in the past, we think that our appearance scores tend to benefit. So that's why we're migrating to the chicken wing. And so I want to, I again want to talk about the trade-offs though, that you have in, in this sort of uh, arena. So there may be some judges who aren't familiar with chicken wings. Although I will say that years ago, many people turned in chicken thighs and chicken wings in a box and judges scored those boxes very well. But as teams migrated to chicken thighs only, the, the chicken wing has fallen out of favor a little bit. And so I think there might be some judges who aren't familiar with that. I think there's also a risk that a judge might not like to bite so close to a bone uh, on the chicken wing as they do on the, uh, they wouldn't have to bite nearly as close to the bone on the chicken leg or chicken thigh as they do on a chicken wing. And so maybe people won't like that. But I think it's worth the risk. There is some trade-off. Um, in preparing for this video, we went to purchase some chicken wings and I've noticed, I noticed yesterday when we purchased them and in past uh, times purchasing chicken wings, chicken wings seem to be the most expensive cut on the chicken. Now, why might that be? Well, I would say, I posit that it's because uh, the chicken wing is the most popular cut. And whereas chicken wings used to be uh, throwaway pieces that were the byproduct of uh, getting white chicken breast meat. Now, the chicken wing is the most sought after piece on that chicken. And it's because chicken wings have become popular. They're popular game day food, they're popular bar food, they're popular finger food. And I think that they've grown in popularity uh, among society. And I think that that is helping teams who choose to cook chicken wings at their barbecue competitions. And you'll find that the thigh and the leg are now much less uh, expensive than the chicken wing. And I think there's an analogy to be made here with brisket. Brisket used to be a really cheap cut. And brisket has started to, started to get more and more and more expensive. When I started in this game, you could get a Snake River Farms brisket for 89 bucks. Now they're $300. You could go to Costco and get uh, brisket, prime brisket for a buck 79 a pound. Now it's almost five bucks a pound. And I think that's because the brisket has grown in popularity. People are familiar with what it is. They're prepared to eat it. And I think that that is similar to what's happening in the chicken wing area. Whereas people were always familiar with their KFC uh, thighs and legs, uh, the smoked or fried chicken wing has really grown in popularity. And I think that that's going to benefit us. Um, although there may be some drawbacks uh, in, in doing so. And so, We've made the decision to go ahead and transition to those wings. And so, and you know, there's no one right way to, to do things. There's no one right cut for chicken. You might find that in different regions of the country, you want to cook legs or different regions, you might want to cook thighs. But I think that wings might be a good bet. And I think that you, uh, you got to try them and see how they score. We'll be doing that this year. And I, I think that uh, teams who do will be successful. As I said before, if you're not improving, if you're not changing, if you're not evolving as a team, you're getting worse. Uh, there's no standing still in this game. Teams who find success are often tempted to stand still and not to fix what's broken. And once they've found that target, which is so elusive in this, in this barbecue competition game, they wanna stay over it as best they can and, and not make any changes. And I think that you'll notice if you look at some of the teams who have been successful in the past, uh, not all of them continue to be successful and the ones who do evolve their game. They change their competition rigs, they change their competition smokers, they change what they turn in, they use different rubs and different sauces as things change on the scene. And that's not to say you should throw the baby out with the bathwater. And if you experiment too much or get too far off, you might find that it's difficult to find your way back. So I would encourage you, if you've got something that works, continue to do it. But maybe try at home, maybe try at one competition and see how uh, 
how your improvements can come along if you continue to make those changes as you uh, continue on your competition barbecue journey. Now let's go inside. I'm going to show you exactly how we select our chicken wings, how we trim the chicken wings, how we brine the chicken wings, how we prep them completely. We're going to put them on the smoker, we're going to sauce them up, and I'm going to show you some ideas of how you can present those chicken wings in the box. Let's head inside. All right, here we are in the kitchen. Let's talk chicken wing selection. For a competition, I like to buy a whole chicken wing, just like this. I don't like to buy them pre-cut uh, into sections because I find that what happens is the, the butcher or whoever, the meat packer, is not as careful in trimming the chicken skin as I will be. And so I like to have control over, over what's going to happen to this particular uh, chicken wing. I also find that generally the whole chicken wing makes for a larger, larger pieces of the chicken wing than it does if you get the party wings pre-segmented. So I buy a whole chicken wing. Now let's talk brands. There's a number of good brands out there. I would use Sanderson Farms. I would use Foster Farms. I would use Heritage Farms. Uh, I would use any of the smart chickens, things like that. But generally I like to get things that I can repeat. So if I'm out on the road doing multiple competitions in a row, uh, I know I can find Foster Farms chicken at any Walmart across the country. And so that's what I'm cooking today as a Foster Farms chicken. It's an all natural chicken. There's no injection or brine solution in this chicken. So I do need to brine the chicken. And so what I've done is I've mixed a brine here. And the brine that I've used today is uh, Cosmo's wood fired chicken injection mixed 50 50 with Big Papa Smoker's chicken injection. And I mix them just according to the package. And, uh, and then I soak the chicken wings in that brine for four hours. Now you can trim these ahead of time before you brine, or you can trim after. This time, uh, because I didn't want to uh, delay the video for four hours while I brine, I brined before I, uh, b before I trimmed the chicken. And so here we are with pre-brined chicken. I've got a tub of it here, and I'm gonna pull that all out, and we're going to break these down into chicken wing segments, and I'll show you what we do for competition. So let's do that. At competition, I only turn in the chicken wing flat. I don't turn in the drumette portion. Of course, this end of the wing, we throw away. And so we just turn in the flat. I find that it's got a better bite than does the drum. There's too much connective tissue in here, and there's just too much variation between the particular pieces. And so I like to find nice, big, meaty chicken wing flats. And so let me show you how we trim these. So what we'll do is we'll find the joint right here. We're gonna go right here between the skin. I'm gonna break that a little to find that joint. Pop that, and we're gonna run the knife right in that joint. Just like that, I'm gonna discard that. Now we're gonna do the same thing down here. Gonna find the joint, run the knife through it, and separate it. Now you see how easy that is? There is one chicken thigh trimmed, chicken, excuse me, chicken wing trimmed. Compare that to a chicken thigh. Pull off the skin, scrape it, etc. But we're not quite done. There's a couple more things I'm going to do to this particular piece of chicken. First of all, there's a couple of pin feathers. I want to pull all those off. You can see those there. We'll get rid of those. All right. Now, right here, you can see there is this piece of chicken skin and fat right here on this edge of the wing. Almost every one of these larger wings is going to have this. I want to get rid of that. But I don't want to come too close to the meat because I don't want that skin to split open at any point in time. But I'm going to take it and I'm going to cut part of that off. Now you can do this with a knife or with scissors. Let me show you with scissors. I think it might be a little more explanatory. You should come in here and trim that off just a little bit because that's going to be a little bit chewy, not a great bite, and not a great presentation. Okay, so now I've got that removed. Now what you've got here is a little bit of that knuckle left from that joint. We want to remove that. So I'm going to come in with my scissors, being careful not to ruin the skin, and I'm going to cut that away. Okay, and so you can see I've cut away that, that knuckle, the remainder of that knuckle right there, okay? And now we'll come down here and see what we've got. We don't want any weird pieces of, of joint left on that because We'd hate for a judge to get a bite of that. So I'm gonna come in here, cut some of that out a little bit. 
All right, there we go, that's good. Okay, now, as for a tip or trick that I like to do, okay, in this chicken wing, there are two bones. We've got a large bone here on my left and a smaller bone over here on my right. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna separate those bones. So I'm gonna come in with my scissors and separate those a little. And I'm gonna try to cut it away from the meat just a little bit here. This is the smaller bone on the right side. Cut it away from the meat. Now, by no means do you have to do this, but I think this makes for a way better chicken wing. Now we're gonna come to the other end. Same thing, okay? Follow that bone right here at the joint. We're gonna cut between those two bones. Okay, now I got another little piece of knuckle I wanna take out of there. If you can see that. And this gets a lot faster once you've done it a few times. But I'm taking it nice and easy to show you folks. Okay, so. You can see I've now separated those bones, okay? So I'm gonna come in here and cut a little more joint out there. We're gonna try to Cut that away from the meat just a little. All right, just like that. And now what we can do here is we can pull that smaller bone right out of the chicken wing. You might have to cut a little more to make that happen. You may need a paper towel to make this go. But you grab that wing and you just pull that extra bone out. Okay, now what that leaves us here is a chicken wing with only one bone in it. So what does that do for you? Well, when you eat one of these flats, there's meat that sticks between those two bones and there's a bit of tenon that sticks between those two bones. And it's hard to get a nice solid bite because either side has a bone really close to the edge. But now we've got one bone and that meat's gonna pull off that single bone right in that judge's mouth. They're not gonna have to fight around those two bones and it still looks just like a chicken wing. So we're gonna do a little more trim up around here. Just make sure we got this nice and round. Take off any rough edges. Another little piece of knuckle we're gonna take out. Okay. And that is a trimmed chicken wing. So we're gonna do one more for you here. I'm gonna take out my whole wing from the brine. I'm gonna run that knife right down that skin. And I'm gonna separate right at that joint with my knife. One side down. This one's a little smaller. May not use this particular one at contest, but I'll still show you the trim. Okay. So now you can see that joint there. We're gonna run this knife right between the joint. Just like that. All right, now we'll clean it up a little. Here's some knuckle we need to get rid of. All right, and not a lot of knuckle on that end. Okay, so you take the scissors, you separate those two bones. We kind of go around that smaller bone, which is on my right again, and separate it from the meat, okay? Push those in a little ways. All right, flip to the other end. We go right in the middle of that joint. And separate those two bones. Now go around the bone a little bit with your scissors. And get that separated from the meat and the other bone, and then you grab the chicken wing and you pull the thick end of that wing out, and you pull that bone straight out. And now you've got a trim chicken wing. This one's a little small, so I probably would not turn that in at comp. And I forgot on this particular wing to trim that little bit of fat. So let's go back and do that, and clean up the shape a little. 
and there's a trim chicken wing. You can see how much smaller that is than that one. I would use that wing and not this one. So that gives you an idea of one that I would probably discard out of a package and not use, but we can cook it here today. Okay, let's do one more, just so you can see. This is a little bit of a complex process, but much easier than scraping chicken skins. Now, you don't have to do this. I, I've been successful turning in wings without having taken out that extra bone, but I just think that the extra touch makes a much better bite for judges and kind of eliminates some of that trade-off you might have on a chicken wing, like we talked about before. Okay, so we're gonna clean up that joint a little with the scissors, okay. Take a look at this joint. There's knuckle left on there, so we're gonna take that off. There it goes, all right. Now again, the small bones on my right, we're gonna separate those. You can see that, let me show you again here. A little bit different angle. I'm just running my scissors between the meat and the bone. just to detach that bone from all the meat and the tendon. We're gonna come back to the small end. We're gonna run that scissor right between the joint and separate those bones. Then we're gonna come around that bone and cut it away from the meat. Don't be afraid to just stick those scissors right in underneath that skin and start cutting. We come back to the fat end. We grab that bone, hold onto the chicken tight. You can pull out that bone right there. And there we have a trimmed wing, except once again, we need to take off that little bit of fat here. All right. There you go, and that's trimmed up nice. We'll just make sure we've got all those pin feathers out of there and that it's all trimmed up and shaped up nice. Sometimes you can take a knife and clean those up just a little. And once again, you could be successful without taking that bone out, but I think it adds a nice touch. And so I'm gonna show you exactly how I do it at competition. And there we go. All right, I'm gonna trim up the rest of these and we'll be right back and we'll show you the next step. All right, we're back. I finished trimming the chicken wings here. These are the wing segments that I have completed. Um, many of these I probably would not select for a competition. I would be focusing on these larger wings. Um, there's four, maybe five decent ones in here. I would have to go through several packages of chicken to select the large pieces that I want for competition. But uh, for today's purposes, these are going to work just fine so you can see how we cook these. So. The next thing we're gonna do is get these rubbed up. So uh, they've come out of the brine, they've been in the brine four hours, now I've trimmed them. You can do that in reverse order, but now it's time to rub them up. If this were competition day, I'd probably be seasoning these up about an hour, 45 minutes before I'm going to go ahead and put them on my smoker. So uh, I like to let them the rub tack up, let the dry brine soak in a little, and pull a little of that moisture out. And so I will get those out about an hour to 45 minutes before I want to put them on the smoker, get them rubbed up. Now, after having been in that brine for hours, these can get a bit salty. Um, what you don't wanna do is over season these. Also, I think that if you put too much rub on the skin, uh, it sometimes has a tendency to build a thick, chewy almost bark that sticks to your teeth. And that's partly because we're going to butter bath these. And when you do that, it softens the bark some. And if there's too much rub, it, it just gets in the way. And so you're not gonna need it. After that time in the brine, they're plenty seasoned inside. We just need a little bit for some flavor and some bark on the outside. So let's go ahead and pull out our rubs here. First rub I'm gonna use is Honey Chipotle Killer Bee from Cosmos. It's one of my favorite rubs. It's got a little spice. Um, it's a great chicken rub. I'm also going to use another of my favorites. I'm about out of this one, and I've had this at comp, so the, the container's a little dirty. It is Our Butts Are Smoking Butt Kicking butt kickin Chicken. This is another one of my favorite chicken rubs. But finally, we're gonna use some of this uh, Luton Booty Gold Star Chicken Rub. Uh, just pay a little homage here to the King of the Wing, uh, Sterling. So the first one I'm gonna throw down is, in fact, the Gold Star Chicken Rub. Move these out of the way here. We're gonna put a nice little light coat here on the back. The higher you shake this from, 
the more dispersed it's gonna, evenly dispersed it's going to be. Okay, so we're gonna shake a little bit of that on there. You can see about how much I have on there, not a ton. Okay, and I'm gonna take this Honey Killer Bee Chipotle. That's gonna be the next rub I do. I'm only using this on the bottom side. It has a little bit of heat, and so I want that to hit your tongue, but I don't hit the top with the Killer Bee Chipotle. Otherwise, I'm gonna have too much rub on here trying to get all three of these. So we're gonna do a little bit of that. And we're gonna come back with a, just a touch of the our butts are smoking, butt kicking chicken. Okay, that's about enough right there. That's a whole lot less rub than you might put on another cut of meat. But now we're gonna flip these over and we're gonna kind of straighten them out a little. I'm gonna need another glove here. Sorry about that. We're gonna straighten them out, make them look pretty as best we can here. Some of these are a little too small, so they're not gonna look super great, but. All right. Now, a lot of people will try to dry their chicken overnight in a fridge, um, uncovered to try to get crispy skin. That's not what we're gonna go for with butter bath skin. We're gonna try to make this bite through skin. And so we're not gonna let ours dry out. I don't mind that it's moist at all. All right, here we go. And we can reshape these a little bit once we get about on the smoker. Now we're gonna come back with the Gold Star from Loot and Booty. And just the R butts are smoking, but kicking chicken on top. And that's about how we want it, just like that. Okay, now we're gonna let these tack up for about a half hour, 45 minutes, an hour maybe, and we'll take these out to the smoker. We're going to cook them on a gateway drum, 300 degrees. I'm going to use lump charcoal. I'm gonna use one single piece of pecan, and we're gonna put these directly on the grates. I'll show you how we do that outside. All right, we're here at the Gateway Drum Smoker. It's preheated to 300 degrees. I don't use a heat deflector or a water pan of any kind. Um, although I do use water pans and heat deflectors on other uh, on other meats, I don't cook these long enough over the fire that I need to have a heat deflector. So uh, the first thing I'm gonna do is come in with just some simple uh, cooking spray, some canola oil spray, and I'm gonna hit my grill grates just to make sure that chicken isn't gonna stick, all right? Get it nice and coated. All right, we're gonna let that smoke calm down a little. And now I've got my chicken wings here. They've tacked up for about 45 minutes. And we're gonna place these on across the grates, perpendicular to the grates. And I'm gonna go ahead and put them pretty side up, try to get that bark set before I flip it. got these on. I'm going to come in and I'm going to try to adjust them just a little and straighten that skin out a little so they, they set the way I want them. But you got to hurry because these gateways will take off on you if you got that lid open too long. Okay, it's about how we want it. We're going to close that lid down. And we're going to check these in about 15 minutes. Um, they may take as long as a half an hour uh, on this side, but we're going to be very careful on the underside, make sure that we don't burn it. We're going to just want it to get a nice good char going, get some of that fat rendering, and then we'll turn it over and it'll be time to butter bath before you know it. We'll be right back for the flip. Okay, we're back. It's been about 15 minutes. I'm going to go ahead and check these. Let's see how these look here. All right. Yeah, you can see that's about what we're looking for right there anymore. And it's going to start to get overcooked. Yeah, that's about right where we want them. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn all these over. Oh, before I do though, I should point out that I've got a stick of butter and about a quarter cup of blue bottle parquet in here. I put the parquet in with the butter so that the butter does not burn. And 
Now I'm gonna take and hit the tops of these with some spray butter before I turn them. Okay. All right, now we're gonna turn them all. It's right how we want them there. All right. There we go, and now I'm gonna squirt the bottoms also with spray butter. Okay, we're gonna put the lid down, come back in about 15, and we're gonna put these into the butter bath. We're right back. Okay, we're back, it's been about 15 minutes. You can see the bottoms of these are getting really nice. Good mahogany color here. These are looking just how we want them here. So we're gonna go ahead and turn these over in the butter bath. Bone side down. A couple of those maybe are a little under, but we're gonna go ahead and do them now. That one's got a bone pulling away, so that's probably not gonna work. That's about the color we're looking for right there. Knock off some of that char. Yeah, these ones right in here, if you can see, that's the color we're looking for. I'm gonna go ahead and butter bath all these, but that's the color we're looking for right in here, okay? That one's not gonna work out. So, we're gonna get these situated in the butter, and I'm gonna hit them with just a touch more rub. And we're gonna get a piece of oil on top. I'm gonna spray them with the spray butter one more time. And we're gonna get a piece of foil on, get a good tight seal, and get that lid closed. All right, about 15 more minutes, we'll be back. All right, we checked these at 15 minutes and they were temping in the 190s. So now it's been another 10 minutes. We're about 25 minutes in. I'm gonna go ahead and temp these, see where we're at, okay? And I'm getting 202. That's what I'm looking for, is 202 out of these. Yep, they're all temping right about 202. That one's about 200. One ninety nine. All right, I think that these are close enough to done. Two oh two. Two oh two. All right, we're gonna take these in and sauce them. We're gonna get back out here and set the sauce, and we'll plate them up on the on the board for you. The wings off. They're ready to sauce. You can see that nice, beautiful mahogany color on there. If there's some nice little pieces of stuff that's a little too dark, you can use a sauce brush or just your finger and kind of touch those up just so they're perfect. You could spend a little time on this and really pick the nice, most even ones if you were gonna turn these in, but I'll go ahead and sauce them. So what I have here for sauce is uh, equal parts smoke this Kansas City style sauce and Heath Riles Sweet. Then to that, I add about a tablespoon of some vinegar sauce. I'll either use Tennessee Red or the Heath Riles uh, Tangy Vinegar. That's good as well. Uh, once in a while, I'll sweeten this up with maybe a little honey, maybe maple syrup, depending on where I'm going. But today, I'm just gonna do it the way we've got it. Uh, it's warmed already, so what I'll do is I'll just take the sauce. I'm gonna put a little in the bottom of my pan. Many times, I'll use a wire rack or a disposable wire rack to set this sauce, but today I've got all those in my cook trailer, so I'm just gonna go ahead and pour a little sauce in the bottom of that. And I'm gonna take each wing, and we're just gonna dunk it in the sauce. And we're gonna go ahead and set it right in that sauce, okay? I'm just putting that sauce in the bottom of the pan so that we don't have the wings stick to the bottom. But I would much prefer to have a wire rack, but I just don't have one here today. We don't want too much sauce on there. In 
fact, I may have a little too much in my pan here. I'm going to spread it out some. This one, see the bone pulled, so that's not going to be a turning wing, but we'll test that out on the on the palette when we're done here. Taking off all that excess sauce because we just don't want too much. These are a small piece of meat here. We just need a little glaze to complement all that rub and smoke. Okay, two more. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take these back out on the grill. We're gonna set that sauce for just about three, five minutes maybe. We just want it to tack up just a little bit. Um, we, we don't want it to caramelize too much. And then we're gonna bring them back in. We're gonna sample them. And if we think they're salty enough, we're gonna leave them the way they are. If they're not, we're going to flip them over on the underside and we're gonna hit them with a little finishing rub. That way they pop just a little bit for the judges. Okay, there we go. I'm gonna take my gloves off here. We're gonna take these out to the smoker. We're gonna kiss these with a little smoke, get them nice and, uh, and set, and we'll bring them right back. All right, we're back. We're gonna set these on, set that sauce. About three minutes, we'll be right back. Okay, the sauce is set on these wings and they are looking just beautiful as you can see here. Nice mahogany color, I can smell the aroma. They smell delicious right now. I'm sure they're gonna be great. Now, one thing you'll notice here is um, I, I selected all these wings from one single pack of chicken wings. Now, if I was preparing for a comp, I would be picking uniform size wings out of several packages. I might go through five packages of wings to pull the wings that I want so that I can have them all large and uniform. And so there's some here that would be good for, for turn in this one here, this one here, another one like that. So those would all be nice turn-in wings. Now the rest of these are kind of a little small and, and uh, misshapen because they just weren't the ideal wing. So if I were gonna turn these in, there's a number of ways I might do it. I'm gonna mess up the sauce a little as I do it, but the first thing I might do is lay them like this in the box. And I might do rows. I'd probably do a row of four and a row of four, a row of five and a row of five across. Another thing you can do is shingle them. So I'm gonna take some of the bad wings to show you. Uh, we might do four or five in the back. Here, I'm gonna move them this way so I can show you what it would look like from the front of the box. And what I might do then is put them in between And again, these are different sizes, so they're not gonna work super well. And so I would do five in the back, followed by four. And then in front of that, I might tuck in three. Um, but that might be a nice uh, presentation there in your box. Uh, shingle them like this, so it, they, they overlap almost like roof shingles. The five in the back, or you could do four in the back and three and two but I did five here and then the next one goes in the gap between the particular, uh, or the row behind it and, and so on and so forth until you get to the front. So that's another option you have. Um, there's any number of ways that you could present these wings in a box. Uh, you can do all kinds of different uh, circles and, and squares and, and different rows and, and columns, however you'd like to do them. Um, but you get so much flexibility out of wings. See, I, nobody turns in a box like this or few people turn in a box like this versus so many people turn in six chicken thighs all the same or six chicken legs all the same. There's a little more variation with chicken legs, but there's many different things you can do here with the chicken wing. And so let's uh, give these things a taste and see just how they turned out. Perfect. Perfect bite. They're plenty salty after four hours in the brine. I don't think they need any additional savory notes. So I'll wipe my face here and I'll tell you what I would use to finish that. So I almost always want to put some sort of finishing rub on my uh, 
on my chicken wing on all my turn-ins because I really want them to pop for the judges. I don't want them to blend into the crowd. It's gonna be one bite. I want it to get all the sweet and all the savory it can take. So in this case, it's salty enough. So I would probably go with a little bit of uh, Honey Killer Bee or Honey Killer Bee Chipotle from Cosmos, depending on whether it's hot enough or it needs a little more heat. If it is, if it needs more heat, I would take the uh, Killer Bee Chipotle. If it's fine on the heat but needs a little more sweet, I'd hit it with a straight Honey Killer Bee. And if it needs some more savory, I don't have the rub in front of me now, but what I typically finish with is Butcher's uh, Barbecue Longhorn Dust. Uh, I, I like to finish my brisket with that, but I also use that to finish uh, any sort of uh, category that needs some additional savory notes. And these don't, so I would just hit them with just a touch of this Honey Killer Bee on the underside. It might have even been a hair too much but I would just hit it with just a tiny bit and then put those back in the box. And those would be ready to turn in. And I guarantee if you cook these wings and the judges are ready for those wings, these will score at your competition. Now. And remember, like this video, subscribe to our Crooked Pigs barbecue channel, and remember to ring that notification bell so you can be notified of upcoming Crooked Pigs barbecue videos. And we'd appreciate it if you'd comment down in the comment section. We will respond to those. Give us your feedback. Tell us what you liked, what you didn't like, and what you'd like to see in the future. And we'd like to know how cooking chicken wings at competition works out for your team. Thanks.